My grandfather has type 2 diabetes. It's hard for him to move around on his own, so most days he sits on the couch watching television. Last year he was hospitalized due to related conditions and that scared me. Watching him shift from being a very active man, always tending to his Greek restaurant, playing with his grandchildren, to being retired and highly sedentary made me ask myself the what ifs. What if he didn't have diabetes today? What if he could have prevented it? Would he still be the happy and upbeat person I used to know? According to the peer-reviewed article titled Obesity and Diabetes in the Developing World, a Growing Challenge, diabetes is rapidly emerging as a global health care problem that threatens to reach pandemic levels by 2030. The number of people with diabetes is expected to increase from 171 million in 2000 to 366 million by 2030. A second peer-reviewed article titled What is Diabetes describes diabetes mellitus as a set of autoimmune metabolic and genetic disorders that share one major characteristic of hyperglycemia. Type 1 diabetes, however, is slightly different than type 2 because of the way it can be acquired. The article goes in-depth to describe that type 1 diabetes is the cause of the immune system attacking insulin-producing beta cells of the pancreas. Type 1 diabetes is normally caused by genetic or environmental factors. For example, I know someone who developed type, two, type 1 diabetes as a result of being stung by a jellyfish. It is generally difficult to avoid type 1 diabetes because of the gene genetic factors related to getting it. On the other hand, type 2 diabetes can occur due to a complex metabolic disorder associated with B cell dysfunction and varying degrees of insulin resistance. This is where we can look for prevention methods because we can see other variables that directly correlate to this disease. The peer-reviewed article titled Obesity and Diabetes in the Developing World says that type 2 diabetes is often linked to obesity, which tends to bring on many other health-related issues such as cardiovascular disease and some cancers. A third peer-reviewed article titled Preventing Type 2 Diabetes in Communities Across the U.S. states that type 2 diabetes can be prevented or delayed in those at high risk through a structured lifestyle intervention. It also mentions that in order to bring lifestyle interventions to communities across America, Congress authorized the CDC to establish and lead the National Diabetes Prevention Program. It is important to address both at high risk and gen general population to make a major impact on the diabetes epidemic. The study in the article found that the strongest and clearest evidence for the prevention of type 2 diabetes supported lifestyle interventions such as nutrition, physical activity, and behavior change strategies resulting in modest weight loss. In the article titled Eating to Prevent Diabetes, the author suggests that reducing carbohydrate intake by choosing more complex carbs and burning them off should help to stop the progression of prediabetes turning into type 2 diabetes. The article suggests multiple ways to do this. To prevent diabetes, people should eliminate sweetened beverages from the diet because they have no fat or protein to prevent carbs from increasing blood sugar. People should also cut back on foods with added sugars and instead reach for whole grains, whole grain breads and pastas, brown rice and wild rice. People should also make sure to eat enough protein as it slows the rate that carbohydrates enter the bloodstream, keeping sugar levels steadier. Eating protein can also make you feel full and reduce the urge to snack. Fiber in veggies and fiber in veggies and legumes will also have this effect. Fiber will slow down digestion and absorption, so you are less likely to get hungry between meals. And by following these nutritional recommendations, as well as considering mealtimes, staying active, and only drinking in moderation, people can work to prevent themselves from developing type 2 diabetes.